you know, a lot of people are like, oh my God, it's Monday, you know, rather than, oh my God, it's Friday, you know, damn the weekend. Yes, I can work again on Monday. You want to be, life's short, right? You want to be yep. like, it's like you, if you have to motivate yourself to start your job on Monday, change jobs. You know? I know I'm being a bit facetious, right? I mean, I know no. economics plays a part in the whole thing, but I know it's easier said than done. But I think it's just, you just do better work when you're happy, right? I've, I've had to tell people that, you know, I, I, I travel around and I speak a lot about empathy and culture and the importance of those things in DEI and that, that whole idea of, of the whole self. And I was done speaking and this woman came up, you know, to me at the stage and she started to, you know, talk about COVID and she was an administrator and she talked about she did everything, everything, you know, for the, the law firm to be successful during that time frame. And I said, oh, well, thank you. And she goes, well, that's what I never received. And I said, oh, I'm, you know, I'm so sorry to hear that. She goes, yeah, there's never been a thank you. There's never been acknowledgement of what, you know, what I did. And so I grabbed the mic and went back and got everybody to hold on a minute. I'd like to share something with you all. And my answer was her was, it's time for you to leave. And I said, I know that's probably the hardest thought for you, but why would you want to continue to work for a culture that doesn't respect the work that you did? Trust me, there's somebody else out there that would very much value what we did. And that sense of value that you would feel is such a great feeling. The, the pay may be equal, but the fact that I'm worth more than that pay is something that many of us don't get and need. So I'm a big uh, uh, champion of the idea if the culture isn't working for you, get out and go to the culture that will work. And as scary and as hard as it seems, in the end, you will do so much greater if you can just rip that band-aid off and take that opportunity to say i'm done with this 100 percent. you know because nowadays you know linkedin jobs boards and everything in between it's just it's way easier now to to look for work it's also easy to to, to like research companies and try and you know do your due diligence you know what's the culture like um message the people that are working in the firm you know, ask ask the person you're about to work for for yeah. references on them. You know, yeah. you get often you get asked yeah. for a reference for the candidate, ask a reference for the hiring manager. What do you like to work with? I want to know. Give me some references. I want to do a 360. Because you know, the work's the work, right? And if you're doing PR, you know, without wanting to belittle PR, but PR is PR, whichever firm you might be in, right? But the difference is working with Terry in his culture, with his team. And that, that's going to really make you, that's going to make it, you know, that's going to make the difference. And it's yeah. worth taking time to, you know, I, I don't know about you, but Lena, like most people, they take a while to decide to propose and get married. <laughs> Job interviews is like speed dating, yeah. right? You yeah. need someone for an hour, <laughs> if you're lucky, and you choose to spend most of your time with them. So. But, and you, and that's it. You are spending a great deal of your time with your coworkers or whether you're, you know, doing it from a, uh, uh, a work or you know virtual remote or or in house you're still spending a lot of your time in that in that work dynamic and that in that work mode so i think that you know one of the things that coming out of the the pandemic did for for all of us was shift the the control so like in the real estate world you've got a buyer's market and a seller's market and it's you know according on where we are economically and and I feel that we have that here. We are now in a talent market and talent has the power because the talent can now do its due diligence way before the interview process begins. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, that's the challenge for corporations, you know, and service industries to really give an authentic sense of who they are, not one that's just written for the fact that I need to have a women's initiative or a DE&I statement. It's are you living these things? Um, can I come to this, you know, environment and will I experience this? And so that talent market now says I can, you know, really take my time and decide where's the right culture to go. And when you think of it from the legal perspective, most clients stick to their lawyer. They don't hire the law firm. It's a lawyer relationship. So if you're thinking about how do you want to increase revenue and you're thinking, you know, marketing and all these other things, well, if you just think about the hiring process alone of attracting other lawyers with their book of business to come, 
And we are seeing a great deal of that type of movement. And a lot of that is coming from big law to start law firms that are changing that idea that culture and other things in which the big law firm, you just can't write those big ships. You know, they still fall yeah. in that old, you know, mentality where the boardroom is profit, not the boardroom is people. So then you got the issue with them from a leadership perspective where you're being challenged on issues like DE&I and, and therefore you're saying, but I'm a small Midwest firm and we don't have accessibility, you know, to different uh, uh, cultures, different races, different genders, whatever that might be. So therefore we're stuck with hiring just all white males. Well, I'm going to call BS on that now because your ability to cast a much bigger net for attracting talent is really up to you now because we've ripped the bandaid off and technology exists and we've all proven that this this kind of yep. new dynamic works. Yeah, yeah. Many, many, many of the searches we do, um, the regional roles, global roles, they don't mind people where people are based. I mean, we're sourcing globally. I mean, there is no more diverse talent pool than that. I mean, you know, even if you just say, hey, anywhere in the US, that's 400 million people, right? That's a diverse mix of people right there. That sure um, is. And you just have, you just have way better options, and you can make a better hiring decision. Um, you know, I think that's important. And also, just let me to, to my point on, well, to your point, just on lawyers and books of business, right? Now, if I'm calling your law firm trying to poach your your star lawyer to one of my clients, happier people are way harder to move. Yes, fact, that's right. Correct. Just, it's just a fact. And if they're happy, happy means. Okay, let's say the money's the same, whatever. Money's never top. But then the money's the same, whatever. It's like, do they like the leadership? Do they like the culture? Is the team good? Like, what's the vibe? You know, stuff yep. like that. If they're if that's a little bit questionable, I can prize them away. You know, you can you can you know you can start to they'll have the conversation with me. Maybe they'll even meet the client. Suddenly, you know, you've planted the seed, it's being watered and you know, they then resign and two weeks later in America, they, they've started somewhere else. So, and it's just so much, it's so much cheaper for a company to treat their employees well than having to rehire, you know, recruitment costs, time, you know. The cost of rehiring alone, retention to me is equal as recruiting, right? They, the, so why yeah. go get the talent if you can't keep the talent? Yeah. And to keep the talent is that sense that we have to constantly adapt to change and stay relevant, which means big word that came out of, again, the, the, the pandemic, empathy. And for those people who cannot show empathy, therefore you're not gonna have retention. It's the, it's just that simple. Yeah. And the generations alone are demanding empathy now. So you have to come in with the idea of being curious, listening, asking questions, uh, um, and, and having that sense of understanding of what makes a person tick in that hour in some cases, right? So, yeah. you know, we've got generations where our parents are now getting sick or our parents are, are you know, are, are, are dying and or we're taking care of them. So you just took care of your kids all your life. Now you're taking care of your parents like their kids all your life. And that's got to affect you. So if I know this and I have this sense of empathy and I have these abilities for you to work when it's best for you to work, I still get great work product. I still have happy clients. And all of that really comes from this sense of, of empathy. Definitely. And by the way, this is throughout the workforce, you know, like you could be a leader or entry level. I just, I think working on your empathy, which is a skill you can improve. Um, it's just going to stand you in good stead. The amount of people when I say, well, how come you made that move? Oh, I went with, you know, I used to work with John and John went to this firm and he took me, took me with him or, you know, or, or my, you know, my line manager went, they then poached me a year or two later, you know, or people will follow you, you know, like people follow people. They want to work with people. That's right. So it's just for every reason, apart from just being a good human being, yeah. um, it's just so worth it. You know, like it's just a really good way to behave. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that's, that's just, that's a really good point. That I love that. That's probably, sorry, go on. No, 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 no. I was just going to say, you know, it, it is interesting in, in, in the sense, too, of from the idea of, of that, that sense of retention, right, and creating that culture and that dynamic. And then that empathy also really allows that idea of, of, of production. But really what we're looking at here is how does 
one business align with another business. And that's what's quite critical here in my mind. So if you've got large corporations, law firms work for everybody. Everybody needs a lawyer and, you know, in yeah. business of some level. And if that corporation is really stepped up to the idea of empathy and DE&I and creating these cultures and creating tables at the boardroom or chairs at the boardroom table for, you know, discussions of empathy and, and diversity and inclusion, they're expecting their partnership to be doing exactly the same. And so that sense of alignment is critical, not just in the hiring and retention process, but also in the idea of professional development here uh, and aligning with the client. So if the clients are sitting in their boardroom and most of them are talking about these issues, I mean, I don't know if you have half of the level of um, insanity that we're seeing here over, you know, gay pride and pride month where a corporation stands up for it. And then another group of people, he says, I'm not shopping there anymore, you know, and uh, it's, it's quite hilarious to watch all this, but you have to decide, you know, where is humanity and where do I fit within that? And how does my corporation fit within that? But also how does it align with my clients? And to me, that's a critical discussion that I like to talk about with, with, you know, our clients is how well are you aligned with your industry and, or, 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 or um, market focus. But um, also and- just going beyond that, um, Going beyond that, like the empathy, if we just go back to empathy, because, you know, lawyers, lawyer, PR, recruiting, it's, we're all services businesses, right? Yeah. So our yeah. business is people, you know, like yeah. you're buying, people are buying from people. Yeah. And, and, you know, you always get the question, oh, how are you different to your competitors? What makes you different? Why are you better? What, do, you know, oh, they can choose, you know, I don't know, they can choose any number of law firms to use. Why are they using you? Or the PR, you know, why do you want to use this PR firm? And I think just, it just go, it goes back to people buy from people, and yes, we're doing business to business, but really, it's people. And you brought it up yourself, right? Like they're using a particular lawyer, and that lawyer could be in any number of firms. The client probably doesn't really care, you know. Or maybe they only want to use a big law firm. Fine. Which big law firm do they want to use? And and so much of it is just how, like the feeling you get with someone, right? Yeah. And and if you've got to my point to that, if your team are happy. And yeah. and they're engaged and they're enjoying it. It just comes across, doesn't it? It was a Simon. I think I did. I watched a talk from Simon Sinek. You know the, the Simon Sinek optimist guy. Loves oh my Simon gosh! Sinek. I live by the why. That's it. And he was like, and the two great things from him actually. But he was like, I'm going to completely destroy his uh, his quote now. But you know, he said something like, if you you know if your if your employees are happy, everything take care, takes care of itself. That that kind of by and large like that. Yeah. And that's it. You know, you've got a happy group of lawyers, recruiters, PR people out and suddenly a client meets them on video or face to face and they're just happy and just nice to be around. That's the difference. That makes Who doesn't difference. want to work in that environment? Who doesn't want to feel um, welcome? Who doesn't want to feel um, uh, worthy? Who doesn't want to have the idea that somebody's going to come to you, work with you, appreciate what you're doing. You know, we all want that. We all want to feel that. So why aren't leaders recognizing the sense that, you know, when you have these toxic cultures and you think about productivity and you look at revenue, all of that's connected because it's the people who generate that revenue. So happy people generate more hours, generate more revenue. It's a no brainer. Let me come to work being a happy gay man every day. Don't make me come to work feeling uncomfortable because you're gonna get 50% of me because either I don't care, I'm, I'm uncomfortable or I'm not allowing my collaboration and my innovation to really shine because you're already shutting me down by creating a culture where I can't be my whole self. I want to go to work every day and be happy about who I am and happy about my family and happy to work with my colleagues. And therefore my clients are going to get the best that they've ever, you know, gotten and expected. Yeah. Love that. And and also more and more now you're seeing people that are just not, they're not waiting. You know, like you might say, this is what your culture is like and they'll start. And it's not, they're out, you know, like I did a poll on, on LinkedIn recently about that. I mean, just, you know, people are out. They're not interested in, you, know, you can you used to be able to beat them over the head with the, uh, the paycheck and, and all of this stuff. Just, it doesn't wash anymore. 
you know, because you, you you know what others are doing. People are talking about it on on podcasts like this. You know, yep. like there's just so much of it around, and you know, and you know, there's better places. There's like what is it, seven billion people living on this planet? You can find one that's really nice and go work with them. You know, like or well, the one bad one you're working with, yep. get rid. <laughs> or go create the culture yourself. Yeah, and oh. attract and really survive and, and thrive. I mean, all of that is optional for us, you know? And I think these are the things that we have to sit back and say, hold on, I don't have to fit within a very specific way in which business is done anymore. It does not exist that way. Yeah. And the idea of people and people power is the idea that humanity is in a trend, right? And we have to be empathetic to that. So I think there's been some great things. Ted Lasso to me is a case study in <laughs> leadership and empathy. I couldn't have better examples than I can from pulling from a Ted Lasso episode, you know? Um, and, and I use that quite a bit because I find it to be one of the best case study examples of leadership allowing for people to fail, allowing for people to be who they are, allowing for changing within a dynamic. Maybe a person says, I've done this for a while, but I'm really interested in trying that. Can you support me in, in, in doing something different here? Sure. Yeah. Let's see how it works out. So, you know, <laughs> I was going to bring up Simon myself, you know, earlier. So I'm glad you did. But I have found the idea of why is what I was looking for, because I'm a very passionate person. So if I can bring my heart to what I do, that's my why. And so I have a purpose every day. I wake up every day and say, I'm going to go help people who help people create great things that help other people every day. I feel great about that. So if I can get the lawyer to think about, wow, you wake up every day to help businesses succeed and thrive and to people, uh, you know, people's livelihood and all these other things, you should feel so good about who you are and what you do every day, not be dragged down by maybe the idea of the stereotypical mindset of what a lawyer is. Change that stereotypical yeah. mindset. 